Hello everyone and welcome back. Today we're going to start off with our sixth weekly video, tackling more first and second reading to from Bat Boy by Mayers, and uh, we're going to talk about various written and spoken conventions, including the same unit. So, introducing the text from Bat Boy, uh, well, first of all, it is an autobiography by Walter, and it provides a vivid account of his childhood and teenage years in Harlem, New York City. And it actually explores the struggles with turbulent family life, poverty, and even the challenges of growing up in a very rough uh, neighborhood. Um, now, in his journey, he tackled a lot of encounters with racism, discriminations, and even injustice. Despite these obstacles that he had in life, he discovered um, a love for reading and writing, which eventually led him to become a successful, actually, writer. Okay, and now, in order for us to know more about the author himself, we're going to participate in gathering information about the author's life, including significant events and influences from various online resources. And then we're going to create a timeline on a large poster. And we draw a horizontal line representing the author's lifespan eventually. And then we're going to move on to think, pair, share, the author's choice of certain basically concept vocabulary and words. And we're going to move on to a challenging question at the end. Are there any contrasting viewpoints in counterparts, arguments, or counter arguments presented in the text from Bad Boy? And we're going to move on to, you know, defining more concept vocabulary words in the text and what do they mean and why did the author specifically choose to talk about and mention them in the text. Now moving on to the library class, it's going to be about formulating a research question. So generally speaking, a research question is a critical basically question and it's a huge process um, as it's considered as a foundation of a successful research. To craft the question itself, one must consider several key aspects. So the question should be specific and focused, honing on a particular topic and basically issue rather than being overly broad. And again, whenever we have in mind that question, we just have to ask ourselves other questions, other challenging questions that are, is my research question specific enough? Moving on to direct and indirect characterization. So we're going to identify and interpret them both as we're going to encourage, again, critical thinking skills, analyze characters on multiple levels. We're going to craft characters that resonate with readers and drive the plot effectively. And last, we're going to acknowledge the major characteristics of direct and indirect characterization of a character of the students basically own. And now moving on to the convention. So we're going to talk about personal and possessive pronouns. So they're the fundamental component of language, functioning as substitutes for specific nouns representing individuals or even things. So they simplify sentences and facilitate effective communication by replacing repetitive, basically, namings. So in contrast, possessive pronouns demonstrate ownership or belonging, indicating that something belongs to someone. So eventually, whether in simple everyday conversations or complex written works, personal and positive pronouns are irreplaceable tools for precise and even coherent communication, allowing us eventually to convey thoughts, ideas, and relationships effectively. In order to start practicing, so accordingly, we're going to have a written practice is we're going to have a paragraph and we're going to copy the paragraph however we're going to be replacing the underlined words with appropriate personal and possessive pronouns in order to approach the effectiveness of even writing itself eventually throughout the week we're going to be introduced to actually adverbs so adverbs are basically dynamic parts of speech that enhance our understanding of actions descriptions and circumstances in the sentence they provide crucial information about how when where and to what degree an action or verb actually um, happens adverbs can modify verbs adjectives and even other adjectives or even entire sentences adding depth and precision to our expressions of everyday expressions actually they come in various forms from those that describe time such as for example yesterday to indicating a manner like quickly for example and adverbs contribute to the richness and complexity of language enabling us eventually to convey not just what but also how when and where um, of an action uh, ultimately making our communication more vivid and descriptive